is fair value auction. I call it fair value auction trading. It's just a title, but it's really the approach that you need to take when it comes to um, uh, uh, the markets, right? And so I'm not going to go into this in depth. I do have a YouTube video, um, I guess, and the YouTube video kind of just skims the surface of this type of stuff, right? It just basically shows you the reasons and I explain the reasons why uh, banks, you know, trade in in ranges or as we know as fair value auctions um, and pretty much um, what you can do to align yourself with, you know, the banks, etc. But Everything I put out on, on YouTube will, will probably be more surface level. This is where you get to, you know, see the actual, um, you know, real in-depth approach. Now, if you don't know, um, if you haven't watched that video, I highly advise you to do it. So I'm not going to go into too much depth about certain things. But one thing I will do have to do is, is kind of go into, obviously, what is an auction, right? And what is a fair value auction, just in case. But basically, it's just a range, yeah, what you would call a range. Um, and... Ultimately, what you're doing is, uh, and what this is, is understanding that buyers and sellers are in agreement, yeah, they're in agreement of the value, right, price and value, are not the same thing, we see a price chart, I would love to see a value chart, but we've got a price chart, and this is time, of course. And let's say, for example, that's one pound or this is like, you know, one pound and this is like maybe, you know, two pounds, right? At this point in time, we know that that buyers and sellers are in agreement that this is expensive and this is a bargain price. And that's ultimately what you need to know. And between expensive and a bargain price is fair value. And the market ultimately is an auction. It's a massive auction where some people will do business and other people won't do business, right? At different areas, at different prices, et cetera. You've got small traders, you've got big traders, big investors, small investors, right? Now, what we want to do, right? What our task to do is obviously to identify where those auctions may start to happen. And so in the supply and demand methodology that I teach, pretty much if you've got you know lower highs lower lows or higher lows higher highs right so that's would be a high a low and a lower high doesn't occur until the lower low happens right so you can't get this without getting this so as soon as you start to see lower lows then that's the lower high right now we know instinctively actually matter of fact before i start going into that let's just do um the reverse yeah that is what you're looking for. So that's a low, high, or previous high. And this is higher low. And this is higher high. And again, you can't get a higher low until you make a new higher high. Now, supply and demand is really all about understanding value, yeah? Now, we know that this was an area of value so much so that it pushed prices lower beyond this previous low yeah now of course you're looking at the base currency here but if you were looking to buy but just understand that this is where the strongest area of supply was because prices pushed past this previous low which was you know either an expensive or a bargain price and prices went to the you know even lower right so now if prices come back up to here in some way shape or form that should be where you want to look for that would be the best place to look for buying opportunities yeah so that's where we're hoping that the auction is going to you know uh, start from right and where we want to get involved and it's the same thing with higher lows higher highs we know that price you know was such a bargain at this point in time that it pushed prices past the previous expensive area high to make higher highs and as we start to come down this area here is you know as long as the fundamentals of course stay in um are, are in alignment this is where the auction should want to you know play out right and that's with you know supply and demand now you also have as well um support and resistance right support and resistance is pretty much you know a similar thing just in the way that it's traded but rather than obviously you know buying 
at this area here, which is what supply and demand teaches, support and resistance teaches that, you know, you're just trading at levels of previous resistance turned support. And that's not to say that it doesn't work because of course it works, right? Because that ultimately nobody knows whether the auction is going to start from here, right? The auction could start from there. And many times it does. Yeah, but let the auction prove itself before or looking at buying that's what i would say when you're looking at support and resistance yeah um and you know vice versa and one of the things that i have to actually i forgot to mention is that you have to believe yeah you have to actually believe you have to get yourself it's really important you actually understand this point is that you have to believe that markets auction yeah more than they trend yeah that march that markets if they're trending, it's within a larger auction. You might be on a 10 minute chart and this might be a, you know, I don't know, a, a hundred pip move. Yeah. To somebody who's on a 10 minute chart, that's going to look like a trend, but ultimately it's within an auction. That's all this is doing. And it's the same thing. You can magnify that or, you know, zoom out on that and it'd be the same thing, right? Prices might trend a thousand pips, but I can guarantee you that if you look back maybe 10 years, right, it's within like a 10-year auction because prices will be contained between that and like on a monthly. So prices, one of the things that you have to, yeah, you have to, whether, I mean, it, I would say it's, 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 it's even higher than that. Is that, by the way, is that Spencer, by the way, HP user? Is that you, Spencer? Is that you? Yeah, okay, excellent. I thought it was you. Right. It's it's probably even more than that. It's way more than that, right? But if you if you look at the market, not from, okay, where is the trend? But where is the auction? Yeah, then what you can do, then what you can do is you can then decide if you can pick where you are in the auction, then you're going to be buying at expensive or cheap levels, right? That's basically what we're looking to do, right? Let's say, for example, something like that. Yeah, we know that this, the bottom end is the potential bargain and that area is potentially expensive. That's what you're attempting to do at all times. Forget the strategy per se. Forget this is this is a strategy. This is just look at this from I am doing business. I want to do business and I want to buy for the cheapest possible price or at least a cheap price. Yeah. You want to establish, you want to look at where business was done. Yeah. Business was done. The banks will tell you, yeah, because they're the ones creating the price action. They will tell you what is, you know, is expensive and what is cheap. And then it's up to you to then decide where you want to trade. Do you want to trade up here? Do you want to trade at fair value? Do you want to trade the 61.8% FIB? Or do you want to trade, you know, at you know, the the the, the most bargain prices you can. And even, you know, you know, you got stop hunts, right? Which is the, the, you know, the absolute rock bottom prices. Best prices you can possibly get. But ultimately, forget, you know, um, stop hunts for now. Your goal as a trader, as any investor, as any, you know, when you're engaging in the markets is for you to establish value, bargain prices, yeah, cheap prices. That's what your number one priority is. Yeah. Forget the trend. Forget, yo, oh, 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 I'm jumping on this trend. It's, it's trending higher. And I'm, you know, I'm going to wait for a pullback. That, that, that approach, throw it out the window, you know, burn it, you know, nuke it, whatever. That mindset is not going to, it's not going to help you. Right. Because how many traders do you know, you know, even before you came into trading 180, right. Everyone's a trend trader. If everyone was a trend trader then, and it was successful, no one would be doing it. I mean, no one would be here. Right. No one would be here. Everyone would be, you know, billionaires, right? Because it's easy to follow trends. But trend trading is not what it is. It's all about understanding where to buy, yeah? On higher highs, higher lows, or if you're using support and resistance, understanding where, you know, the levels are, yeah? That is key. That is key. And so if you look back on really where businesses are doing the most business or banks are doing the most business, what you'll find is that depending on obviously the pair, 
<laughs> Trend your weight. It, 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 I mean, it does. It does. It can, of course. But, you know, it's one of those things where, um, where like I said, if everyone, trend trading is the easiest thing in the world to, to do, right? To spot a trend and, you know, flip in, jump on a trend. But how many uh, trends actually end up, um, you know, making people, you know, lots of money consistently? You know what I mean? Um, but I get your point, Ken. I know what you're talking about. Um, right <laughs> you know what if only if only people on youtube really actually knew this stuff right um anyways um so bank auctions right now we see or what i've noticed is that um is that banks will trade within larger auctions right they do business let's say for example you know we've got a, a large range right They'll do business, and I say a large range or a large auction, fair value auction. Um, but what you'll notice is that banks will do business um, typically, typically in minimum, you know, 200 pip, and it depends on the pair, 200 to maybe something like maybe I would say 600 pip auctions and this depends on you know the volatility at the time this depends on obviously the pair etc right yeah if you, i mean if you're buying here right if you're buying at the low of, a, of an auction yeah and you know you've got maybe a 300 pip auction because you bought at the at, at a bargain price you know the, that's that's really the focus the focus shouldn't be on whether you're making higher highs higher lows and jumping in around here you should be buying low and selling high right that's really the you know so forget trends you should be focusing on really you know where the auctions are um but if you look at um you know uh at bank auctions right and where banks are doing you know a lot of business you'll find that they do a lot of business within this you know 200 to, and, I, and i and i use these you know kind of loosely don't quote me on it you know 100 um but typically again it's really kind of 200 to 600 pit ranges and that or fair value auctions and that is you know dependent upon um you know what's going on in the market the volatility because volatility picks up and then it you know cools off etc right and certain pairs are more volatile than others so if you're looking at just as an eyeball eyeball these types of auctions on a daily yeah on a daily and weekly chart yeah daily and weeklies yeah this is what you want to identify yeah, I'm going to show you how to really identify them. Yeah. And also as well, use the bank um, um, uh, uh, analysis, right? So the, the reports that we get from, you know, uh, Mizuho, MUFG, uh, you know, uh, all of those are Citibank, use those, right? Use those levels. And I'll show you basically what I'm talking about, because they actually tell you what the auctions are of where expensive and cheap is and so if you go to for example this is Mizuho right this is their monthly report they say expected and they use ranges but pretty much it's the same uh thing right so they're saying that they're expecting the yen to be actually a thousand pips which is quite extreme um but these are the areas that they that they uh that they're looking at right the 136s to the 126s now if you want to get short on the dollar yen then in fact this is the bargain area this is what they're saying they're telling you they're communicating to you is a bargain area providing that obviously their analysis is correct which it should be more than it isn't right mm -hmm. not going to be 100 all the time and so this is where you're thinking to yourself this is you know the you know where the auction is and by the way there are auctions within auctions so even though they put a thousand pip you know auction in a trend what you tend to have if this is a if this is a thousand pip auction yeah if they say that this is you know a thousand pips what you can have is you can have an auction that is you know maybe 300 pips one that is maybe 200 pips one that is maybe another 200 pips another 300 pips do you know what i mean and what you'll get is price within that auction oh sorry one second i'm just looking for my uh, drawing tool here we go right it might look like a trend to the untrained world and to the untrained eye you know that's basically what is happening or what is likely to happen but to most traders you'll just see that as a trend 
yeah you'll see that as a trend but within this thousand pip auction that they're saying is pretty much this the one three six is up here is where the bargain is if you want to buy the yen or it's expensive for the dollar right and this is vice versa right one two sixes is going to be you know either expensive for the yen or it's going to be cheap for the dollar depending on which way you want to you know uh which which way you are fundamentally uh looking to uh, uh to trade but either way you're looking for again highs and lows of of uh of fair value auctions we go to for example um fx weekly on um uh this is i haven't looked at this for time because they uh they don't actually um uh, uh they call maybank yeah and they don't really update their uh their analysis now uh, as much or as frequent um but if you go back to their past analysis you can see where they've got support at 99.40 resistance at 102 for the dollar they're saying that the auction is between you know 102s well sorry 99.40 yeah which is down here yeah and 102s so they're telling you where expensive is and where bargains are right that's what they're expected and the value of the dollar is likely to be yeah if you go to citibank yeah citibank technical levels they will tell you and they will show you what the levels their technical levels are support support resistance resistance to right and they're telling you that between support to and resistance to yeah that's going to be one auction or it's going to be between support two and resistance one or support one and resistance one or support one and resistance two either way these are seen as you know, either bargain prices, if you're looking at buying the dollar, or if you're looking at buying the dollar, these are going to, or selling the dollar, these are going to be your bargain prices. Yeah, so the banks are showing you, say not all of them, of course, but, you know, they, they can publish, um, and they do publish these types of analysis to tell you where is expensive and where is cheap for now, of course, because fundamentals do change. And so, you know, it's really, really important, really important to think in terms of um, in terms of in terms of auctions. And one of the things that you want to do to kind of establish the average fair value auction on a currency pair is to actually back test, right? And so, so say back test, but just basically go back, yeah, go back on a currency pair, any currency pair, right? We can do this one. I don't know why I'm on the, on the New Zealand CAD, right? But what you want to do is you want to see, go back and look at what the average, I don't know, I don't want to go back that far, maybe the last five years, right? And look at, first of all, what the larger auctions, the most obvious auctions were, right? Uh, where am I? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm looking for this one, right? So you can see that price was in this auction here. Yeah. It was in that auction and that was about a what's that about a thousand pip auction right and then you've got an even bigger auction right there a little bit you've got another one here what you want to do is you want to just do as many obvious auctions as possible yeah and just see where um uh, and get maybe more of an average yeah of where you would like to trade so what i mean i want to show you what i mean by this right so just get as many auctions as you can small and large auction there auction there this is a daily chart and you can go up to the weeklies as well there the auction there as well
Yeah, you can keep going. Nice and between that high and that low. Yeah. There's some washing right there. And what you want to do is see, get an average, try and get an average of, of the um of the auction. So if you've got, for example, you know, good, you've got auctions that range from around about 200 to maybe 500 pips, then the average might be somewhere around, you know, 350, 400 pip, pips on the range, right? And what that basically is saying is that you want to then start to trade or look for trades within a pullback that is around that average, right? So go back, go back, go back. Let's put it that. We've got a massive range. All right. So we can see one of these is like say 350. We've got another one that is probably somewhere like somewhere like here. Oh, hasn't got the thing on it. One sec. That 240, 250, 374, 170s, 170s. You've got one that's probably around 456. Another one that is, what's that one there? 228. That one is probably somewhere like uh, 224. That one is about 303. Uh, fours, 200. You've got a larger one there. One about 200 there 200 and something right so what you're doing is you're going back and you're just eyeballing and seeing you know where the most obvious auctions are and also the range you know what i mean that's the size of those of those auctions and then what you're going to do is just that's how you establish really how far the auction is likely to go in your favor so what i mean by that is this is when you see a, a move to let's say for example you want to go long or you want to go long on this pair yeah so if you know that the average auction is let's say for example on a new zealand cad let's say i don't know 350 pips let's just say that's the average auction size yeah 300 to 400 pips if that's what you've established on that pair when you get a pullback yeah around three to 400 pips if it obviously aligns with a nice you know either a level of support and resistance or even better obviously some sort of uh demand zone yeah then it's like okay brilliant yeah i know now that prices are likely to auction within this pullback the pullback is deep enough so that prices will likely auction yeah does that make sense to everybody Does that make sense? And you're only looking at obvious highs and obvious lows. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get a pullback, if you get a pullback, and you've gone back and you've done your back testing, you've said, all right, an average, you know, three, 400 pips, some, somewhere in that, in that region, right? That is what you're looking for. That's one of the, that's one of the things you're looking for. Yeah. The, the key though, the key is to only is to is to also trade around obvious swings, yeah, obvious highs and lows. So when you're looking at auctions, for example, something like this, you're looking at lower highs and lower lows, right? So you're looking at that, that led to there, that led to there, that led to this. Yeah. Now, once you've established, once you've established. Yeah, the, the swings, what you're assuming is that price is likely to auction between one of these swings. Yeah, nobody knows. No one's going to know, right? Because ultimately, you know, it's this is probability trading, right? It's, anything could change. So once you make a new low, the, the, the closest obvious swing within the number of your you know, your average uh, auction size, let's say, for example, that's, you know, 350 pips, yeah, which was, this would be, 
Yeah, you know that if, if you want to get short, this is where you you're looking for the trade, right? That's where you're looking for the trade in the top half of say top half, but the, 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 that is the best place to trade. Now, could prices come up to fair value and reverse there? Of course it could, right? I'm not saying that prices are going to go all the way up here. Nobody knows, right? But this is where you're looking for the best possible opportunity to trade. You know, I don't want to confuse this with, this is the strategy, this is what, I mean, it obviously is a strategy, but I don't want you to think that I'm saying, um, you know, if prices do this, then it's going to do that. I have no idea. If prices come up here, it could continue to go higher, right? I have no idea. But if you're looking at this just purely from where the best place to trade is and where the banks, where the big money is likely doing business, and they do business in an average of 300 to 400 pip auctions, yeah, on average. Of course, average is just an average. It's not a certainty, not a guarantee, then you've got that historical advantage on your side, right? You've got that on your side and only trade around obvious highs and obvious lows. If you get a situation like this, right, where it's not necessarily obvious where the, you know, where the, 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 the nearest, you know, swing is, although yes, you do have lower highs, lower lows being made, but if you have loads of them like this going on, then ultimately, if you have a gap on, you know, above it, right, or where it's obvious that it's just got that drop, then you've got that, then you're either going to draw it around from here where that swing would be, yeah, but also as well in conjunction with support and resistance. And you'll notice that is where business business was being done right and that's what support and resistance is it's just showing you where banks are doing you know major business that's all it is right same thing here banks are doing business up there I've done major business up there so you want to try to ignore you want to try to ignore any levels yeah any intraday levels that aren't aligned with where business is has typically been done in the past. Yeah. And where the auctions, the average auctions are now, some auctions are going to be smaller. You can make a, a judgment call, right? You can say, oh, this is, there's a 200 pip auction, or you could just say, you know what? I'm not going to trade the 200 pip auctions. I'm not going to trade the, the 150 or the 100s, right? I'm only going to trade in and around these three, 400 pip moves. And by the way, actually, I, I do want to caveat that with saying you can trade any auction you want as long as the location of that auction yeah, is in an area that has um, that is in a cheap or considered cheap area on the daily or, or weekly auction. Does that make sense? So you don't want to trade smaller auctions up here because, you know, when you zoom out that this you 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 know you haven't had much of a pullback. You might have had a hundred pip pullback, but if you know the average auction size is three hundred to four hundred pips, then you want to trade intraday auctions or you know CPRs etc. at these areas. That's where you're looking to trade. That is where you're looking to trade. Right? There's nothing wrong with trading these smaller auctions. Just trade them in and around bargain prices this was a bargain you know this was established bargain right because prices went went up right and then we look at here and we say okay is the new zealand dollar still the currency that is hiking yep all right brilliant i want to be a buyer here right prices come back down doing more business get a bit of a stop hunt around here it looks like on a lower time frame and could see higher highs if that the level doesn't work cool we just wait for the for the for the um for the auction to establish itself, right? So what you would then have is, let's say, for example, prices drop down. At some point, either you're going to get something at a past area of support and resistance, and it might be in a bit of no man's land, meaning that it might not be around um, an area of supply or demand. That's fine. Yeah. 
all you're doing is is waiting for the auction to establish itself once it establishes it you don't necessarily have to try and pick the lows once it establishes it and it moves you know an average of maybe two three four hundred pips away from that brilliant because you know what's going to end up happening it's going to end up pulling back at some point because as we've already established historically yeah business is done in auctions yeah even when you look at this trend let's look at this overall trend someone somebody might say well that's a that's a clear trend to the downside right and i will argue that it isn't if you zoom out long enough that is an auction yeah and then it's just auctioned its way down that's all it's done auction there it's auctioned here yeah it's auctioned for a little bit here one sec guys uh the message is calling ah, i'll call her back in a sec right so this is an auction right there this is an auction so you can see yeah that prices actually are auctioning their way yeah we do have moments where you do get stuff like this but ultimately what was that that was just trending within this larger auction right that's all that was doing level 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 so it was just a larger auction. Prices trend within larger auctions. Yeah. So with all that being said, when you're, this is uh, something that you want to do, is look for, like I said, when you're looking for the auctions, you can get a FIB tool. Yeah, get a FIB tool. And what you can do is um, if you want to know the best places to trade at all times is make sure you have these settings here, right? So you have zero, one, you have 0 0.8, 0 0.5 is your fair value, 0 0.2, yeah? Those are the, uh, that's 20% of the bottom, 20% of the top. And then, all you're looking to do is trade in and around these areas. You know that that area is a bargain or a potential bargain. No one knows for sure, of course, depends on the fundamentals. Yeah, but that and then that is expensive or cheap depending on obviously what you're trading. And all you're doing is trading in those areas. This is the best. These are the best bargains. These are the prices where you want to look for buy trades until obviously something changes. Yeah. Was there anything else I need to say about that? Uh, trade, intraday setups, yep. Long jump, hundred entries, yep. And examples, exactly. So I went through that on the New Zealand CAD. And you can see it on, on loads of different, you can see it on every, in fact, you can go to something like oil, right? Because everyone was talking about oil today. Let's do oil, right? Oil is a, is a great one. So if I was looking to trade oil, First of all, I'm looking at obvious swings, obvious highs and obvious lows. Yeah, let's look at, that's an obvious swing. There's an obvious swing, there's an obvious low. Right, the most obvious ones there, probably that swing that led to that low swing there. Probably that one as well, right? Now, first thing, actually first thing to do is really to go back and look at where 
um about at, at the auctions but let's just say i have no idea on i have no idea on um on oil but let's just say the average move was this recent move here which was what's that uh, 15 dollars something like that let's just say the average is about 15 dollars so let's say there let's say for example we've got an, an auction from here to here is about an auction got another auction there to there yeah it looks about right got another auction from or bigger auction there within that auction you've got other auctions which look decent you've got one there to there and you've also got another one and remember this is a daily chart as well so when i'm drawing some of these auctions you can see that lasted what 57 days before it finally kind of broke out between you know that, that high and that low that's about you know uh three months of uh, of trading so let's say the average is yeah maybe something like about 15 dollar ranges right 15 dollar auctions and so when you see something like this you know this move from this high for example to this low yeah if that then starts to come in to you know that that move is like you know 15 15 dollars then you know that in fact and you're looking to obviously go short in and around that area there yeah that obvious there will be in supply then all you do is once it's made the move once it starts to pull back up to this level so make higher highs higher lows all you're doing is going from the high and let me just clear this chart up a little bit yeah so from that obvious swing there so the low 20 percent is where you're looking the top 20 percent is where you're looking to trade right in that area you don't want to trade at fair value you want to trade only when it comes into bargain areas bargain yeah down here was what an absolute bargain Yeah. So the best opportunities to look for trades, if you're buying, would have been here. Selling would have been here. And then you can even obviously get a bit more granular because you've got this higher, 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 low, right? So you've got low, high, low, high. So now you're thinking that this is probably going to be the start of the new auction, right? And that to there and that to there. Look what happened. And that ended up being the trade as it came down into that because that higher highs, higher lows, exactly as I described, right? At the beginning of this, you're looking at this being the first area to look for bargain trade. And again, I don't know whether this is going to work out, right? The market might not agree. It may agree, it may not, right? It might just, we see it you know, we could see something like that. It might the market might, might come down all the way here. The market might go through there. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to trade silly levels around here, 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 and start moaning and complaining, yeah, about how supply and demand doesn't work. Because you're ultimately trading and you're doing business at areas on the price chart that you should not be doing business at. Even if this works, even if prices came down, you didn't take the trade and prices went higher. doesn't matter. It was not the best place to do business. You want to do business where the institutions are doing business. And the institutions are doing business patiently, right? They do business all over the place, to be fair. But they're doing bigger business where? At these areas. And these areas are obvious to see. Highs and lows, highs, obvious highs, obvious lows. Yeah, ignore. And when we talk about, you know, when 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 the uh, you know banks and you know social media talk about, oh, this is a choppy chart, this is messy. It could be as choppy as messy as it wants. You know what? You're always going to see a high, and you're always going to see a low. That's what's going to be clear. I can guarantee you that. You're going to see a high and you're going to see a low. Yeah, this might be choppy and people might say, oh, is it going Is it going up? Is it going down? No, 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 no. That's noise. That's chop, whatever it is. You're not doing business around this. You don't care. Let them, but where you are going to do business is where? Here. And here. Highs 
and loans of obvious auctions that institutions are doing business. Yeah, best places to lose, look, look for stop hunts, right? Best places to look for stop hunts, for CPRs. Do you know what I mean? Everything, all the business. If you look at if you look at CPRs, the CPR trade setups, where are they done? It's always normally at highs <laughs> or, or, or lows, right? Normally at highs, above, you know what I mean? Established auctions where traders are trading breakouts. That becomes now the new auction, right? And that might become the new auction you do business around there. Stop hunts, highs and lows of auctions. All right, beyond the bargain prices, right? Which is what the banks do business, how the banks do a lot of their business. But regardless, you're doing business here and here. Zoom out on the daily, look at where you are. Once you establish where you are in a daily and on a weekly time frame charts, and you establish what the average, you know, auction move is, you know, over the past maybe 10 years, then you only look for auctions that have moved and prices that have moved that far. You know, that's it. So, any questions? Any questions? Oh yeah, by the way, don't forget moving fair value and the uh, in the RSI as well. You can add those. I still have a, a, a thing where it's like, even if prices, let's say for example, the average, I've got to obviously clear this up, right? So even if you have, let's say a, 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 an auction that's pulled back, let's say for example, 300 pips. If let's say for example, the move down, this, this, is, this has been you know 300 pips, right? But the moving fair value, the monthly is still here then I'm still thinking to myself, hmm, I'm still very hesitant. I'm still very hesitant. I still want to trade at least at the moving fair value. It's rare that that happens, I think. I think it's rare, but I would rather then trade here than look for, uh, let's say, for example, I don't know, that was a, there was a move here or something like that. Still just have enough, as much confidence as you can, you know, with, with the trades. But ultimately, trade auctions. Don't trade trends. Do not trade trends. When you come to a chart, I want to repeat this over and over again. When you come to a chart, don't look at what the trend is doing. Don't look at what you know price has done today. I've heard you know the, the, the last couple of days. Oh, why is the, the Swiss strengthening? Why is the 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 yen weakening? Don't worry about that. Look, just worry about where you're going to do business. Because if prices are going higher and against your position, excellent. It's coming to a cheap area. That's all you need to be concerned about. Obviously, you want to find out why, you know, what I mean, because the, uh, you know, uh, it could be, you know, the bank has made an announcement, right, or something has happened fundamentally, of course, you're always you're always trending. But let's say, for example, you go online, and you look at Google, and you're thinking to yourself, what's going on, I can't find anything. Just look at it like it's just liquidity, it's just smaller players doing business within, you know, the uh, within the auction, if it's coming up to your area where you want to be a look to be a buyer, or a seller, that's it. One sec, guys. One sec. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Does anyone want to comment or say anything? So I'm about to wrap this up.